Okay, so here we go. We are taking a look at um, creating a C and C paragraph. That's a compare and contrast paragraph. Um, and as you can see, I've already done a fair bit of my uh, brainstorming here. So I've done the topic selection, which is picking the stories that I want to compare. And remember, you can you can you can choose any of the six stories uh, for the comparison, except for the two that I'm demonstrating in this example here. So as long as you're not trying to compare and contrast river rafting with singing bowls, then you're good to go. So you can see that what I've done is I've set up a very simple T-chart with the story names uh, in the top of each column. And then I've got uh, boxes for the similarities that they share and the differences that kind of make them distinct. Now in the brainstorming process, I don't recommend um, trying to organize things too, too cleanly. Just let the ideas flow. So that's what I've done here. And you can notice this by the fact that right now my ideas are not in the right order. So then this would be the second part of the process that I'm moving into, which is essentially um, what we'd call idea organization. So I'm just going to reorganize the windows of our analysis. Um, remember that we're using a three layer or three window analysis um, for the purpose of this type of paragraph. And we start with the beta level, um, which is things like characters, setting, uh, the plot line, climax, things like that. Then we move to the alpha level, which is talking about things like metaphors, alliteration, similes and personification. Um, and then finally, we want to get, make it to the omega level, which is kind of the highest or most complex because you're trying to understand the core meaning of the story itself. So that's like theme, um, the author's perspective, uh, more advanced tools like in media's rays and um, foreshadowing are some of the ones we looked at as well as dialogue. So then for differences as well, we can see that uh, I, I noticed a theme first, but we can just very simply repurpose that down to the bottom um, just to get our, our ideas nicely organized into the pattern that we're actually planning to write them in. So now if we, we're almost there, we've got a couple more Omega items to, to, to move here to reorganize. And then we will begin the writing. Okay, so we can see that now we've got it set up as beta, beta, so that's the first window we'll talk about, alpha, alpha, and then omega, omega, and similarly here, beta for both, alpha for both, and then there's a couple of different omega points in terms of differences. And we can just move this up, get this uh, nicely organized, because this, this box will become useful for us once we actually start doing our writing, we'll be able to jump back, uh, back and forth between the the brainstorming section um, and the writing section. Now remember when we start we're always going to start with a title and you can try to come up with something really kind of clever and pithy but at the same time it's also useful just to put a placeholder here so I could very simply call this um, finding similarities and differences in river rafting and singing bowls. So I might change this or upgrade it later, uh, but but as a working title, it's it's a good start. So remember that we also want our things to be organized properly. That means we're going to indent the first line. Okay. Now remember, we have to start with a clear topic sentence. It's best if the topic sentence gives some indication of the authorship, the, maybe even the name of the stories. Um, but most importantly, you want to kind of touch on your purpose as well.
Okay, so how did we do? First of all, let's also remember that we want it to be double spaced. Good. So we've got a uh, statement of purpose kind of right at the beginning there. Uh, then I've then I've gone ahead and used a semicolon to create a link between that statement of purpose and the guiding section that kind of will be talking about what the stories that I'm going to discuss, uh, what stories they are. So let's remember also that for our class, we are following the APA standards of our italicizing uh, story titles. Okay. So now I've kind of set up that I've I've done a linking a linking sentence here that's going to tell us a little bit more about how I'm going to conduct my analysis, um, which will then lead smoothly into looking at that first um, first window, which we've been calling the beta window. So if I go back to my chart now, and we can see that talking about the protagonists. Okay, fair fair enough. Okay. Okay, wonderful. So you can see that at the same time as I'm building my ideas, I am um, using the uh, triad of support method. So I've got I've got uh, the kind of setup sentence here, which which would be uh, this section, this kind of second section. So I've written a transitional idea that links into uh, the setup or idea sentence. Now I've got my first citation. And then I've got my second citation. So this whole long sentence here, which is a complex B sentence with a uh, PLMP C at the front of it, um, is a, what what we'd call a double citation. Now, just to touch on the details, we go back and we grab the titles. Now, remember, we've also established that once you've mentioned the titles once, which we've done clearly up here at the top, then you can shift into a shorter title as long as it's very obvious um, that they're connected. 
So obviously river rafting is the, talking about the river rafting on the Pantledge story and singing bowls is talking about the singing bowls of poker. So we just shrunk them down for simplicity. And now we go back and the final thing we need to do is make sure that all of our signal verbs go into the past friends. Good, so that's kind of the process of double checking as we go. Now we'll notice that we've moved it into the present tense in our analysis sentence. Oh, wait a second. So what we've also got to do here is we have to kind of decide whether we want to talk about the, the windows first and then do similarity difference, similarity difference, or whether we want to do a what's called a block structure where we talk about all the similarities first and then we go through all the differences second. So I think if I just come back up and check out my um, example here, my, my, my brainstorming section, I think that we're going to do the three themes. We'll separate the windows, talk about similarity and then difference. That just kind of makes sense for me. Okay, so now we're going to throw in one of our uh, compare and contrast cues are one of our contrast cues, conversely. And here's another trick. If you're in the flow of writing and you don't necessarily want to go back to check the story right at the moment, you can put a page page number marker just like this. And then later before we submit our final draft, we will go back to the story and pick the actual section. I know that's true. I know there's a large character cast of characters. I can remember reading in the story. And I do remember the author also gave some very clear descriptions of the characters. Um, and, and so I know it exists within the story, but I just can't remember exactly what page number it was on. So I just put my marker in and then I move on. And again, I'll put a page marker in there. 